Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee. Remember to use the promo code DNVR20 for first time users to get 20% off your entire purchase and DNVR25 for second time users to get 25% off your entire purchase of the CBD infused, deliciously rich and potentially life altering Strava Craft Coffee. I'm your host, Drew Creaseman. I'm the managing editor of DNVR Rockies with me here live in studio is our director of social media, Michaela Perkins. Hey. Hi. I wish you were gathering on a more positive uh, I know. Note. I know. Uh, we, and we got to bring in a heavy hitter from the home studio, beat writer Patrick Lyons, uh, because there is much to discuss on this episode. Uh, as much as we would hope to be celebrating our first in-studio in show of the year, really, uh, we, we have got to jump into this <laughs> athletic article from Nick Groke. Uh, didn't know he was going to be dropping this on us this morning. And uh, uh, Patrick, it was a lot. Don't forget a young up and coming journalist also that works for the athletic named Ken Rosenthal right. <laughs> and the work that he was able to put in on this story. It was a lot and there wasn't too much uh, new information. I don't think there was kind of some details as far as certain full-time staff members after they punched out at the end of the day had to punch back in to clean cleats <laughs> and uh, work on the, the field crew and, and set up the tarp. But other than that, it was really just this confluence of details and evidence to show uh, lackluster front officing. Yeah, uh, you, you we'll, used we'll the word. Down on what we should call it. Yeah, the l lackluster. I was, I was maybe going to use the word dysfunctional, uh, something like that. Michaela, you had a very strong first reaction to reading uh, the piece this morning. I, I do want to get into kind of line by line and like Patrick said, talking about what was new, what wasn't, what just feels more raw right now. But what, what was just your first immediate top line takeaway from this piece? I mean, I don't even think there are enough words to describe the way I felt reading that article. I mean, we all know that the front office is dysfunctional and things haven't been going well as of late, but I think to have it in writing and like line by line, just be able to really process and digest that information was just, I, I, I don't even think there's words. It was so infuriating. Like I was hot because I was sad about what I was reading and it just, I, I'm just, I, I don't even know what to say anymore. Well, let's, let's talk about this because I want Patrick to, to lead us kind of through the, the big takeaways from the actual piece and, and kind of set us up for those. Throw us pitches that Michaela and I can take big, ugly, angry swings at because there's a lot to be frustrated about right now. But let, let's just start with, from both of you about the timing of the piece. We've been having several. We've been doing this show. Last time you were on, Michaela, everything was feeling better. We're drafting your dudes. We're having a good time. And just the timing of this piece, like with Patrick having said, you know, there wasn't a ton of new information. I'll start with you, Michaela. Like, did it just almost, did it feel like it blindsided you in a way, even though, like you said, you knew all this stuff wasn't good about the franchise, but just hearing it this morning again had to be rough timing. Yeah, it was a little frustrating in terms of the timing, just because I had already gone through the entire grief process of losing Nolan and now to kind of gotten over that and like getting excited for baseball season again and you know kind of moving on from that situation in a way just to have this <laughs> slap in the face hit uh on the twitter this morning it was rough because like i said we had all kind of vented and processed and gone through the emotions of losing nolan and now to kind of once again it feels like um you know when you break up with an ex and then you get back together with them and then they betray you and, again. And then it's the same thing. And you just feel stupid. Like that's how I feel. I feel stupid for feeling excited about the Rockies because holy crap, this is a horrible situation. And I just don't think I understood. Really, I didn't process the depth of it until today. And I feel like I just got scorned by an ex again. Oh. Michaela, to, to use your analogy, which I think is very apt, is you didn't even have to necessarily get back together with the ex. It's just maybe you're, you're, co you're, you're, you're being friendly, right? And then you learn about something else that happened when you were together. It goes, oh, what? I mean, right. I was already burnt and I was trying to get past it. And now I know that there was this other thing going on simultaneously too. 
now how can I get past that? Because as I said, the, the, there was some new information that was just kind of minor, but it just added this other element to this case that was essentially, you know, being made this entire off season. And we broke it down a lot on the podcast and Rosenthal and Groke really kind of hammered home this thesis that it's been all about Dick Monford. And he, he wants, I think, to be the face of the franchise for better or worse. And I think it's for <laughs> the worse. And he point. is. <laughs> and, Literally for the worse. We and, are at and, rock bottom right now. Yeah, like this is just, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I, I, I'd been writing about it for a while. I, I'd put it on the shelf when the team was good. But th this goes back for me my early days getting into writing about the Rockies, it's always been about Dick Monfort. When people wanted to make the problem all about Dan O'Dowd, I was there going, I'm not sure getting rid of Dan O'Dowd solves the problem, folks. And I think what really came to a head in, in this article, guys, is uh, like we keep saying, it, it's that deeper feeling and understanding of what it's like to be there every day. There's nothing on the field that's different today than it was yesterday. We're still exactly the same amount of frustrated over the return for the Nolan Arenado deal. And wherever you were at on the scale, you're exactly the same amount of excited or not for Ryan McMahon and, and Garrett Hampson and Sam Hilliard and the like. The, the issue is, I, I think, and, and Patrick pointed out right there at the beginning, so that's the, maybe the first pitch to swing at, is the way they're treating their employees, this having to go and do this extra stuff and not, not only a front office analytics person, but you've got to go and take care of the laundry and do all these other things. And it's like that, that is so telling of a top down organization wide failure of ownership. Absolutely. I mean, there's no other way to describe it other than a complete organizational failure and look we've always known that the Rockies operate differently than other major league baseball teams just due to the nature of being a smaller market team I mean there are people in the front office who wear multiple hats just because that's the nature of the beast when you work for a smaller market team however that does not excuse at all asking your front office staff to work a nine to five job and then stay until 2 a.m. that same day working another job that's not in your job description, which I guarantee you they didn't get paid overtime for. It was just lumped into there. This is what you're doing to help us get through this like the season. And I just I feel so bad for those people who are on the sinking ship, it feels like. Like they are being asked to do things that they shouldn't be asked to do. And it should just come down to the fact that Monfort should realize this isn't their job. I either need to bring back the people who were laid off or hire new people to do this job because having all of this responsibility on my employees' shoulders is not acceptable. And it creates a toxic work environment, which we already knew existed within the organization, but now it's just been amplified due to these horrible decision makings from ownership the article says quote the rockies seem to live on an island of one operating with different standards than other more successful clubs even internally for instance rather than bring back furloughed part-time clubhouse attendants for the shortened 60 game season in 2020 they assigned more than half a dozen full-time front office staffers to work the job of quote clubbies including shining shoes cleaning laundry buying chewing tobacco for players in both the home and visiting clubhouses of Coors Field. So my question to the both of you would be, we give credit to Moffert for being loyal, and we know how he's supposedly that is taking care of their own. Should, do we take that back? I mean, yeah, because we, we thought they were taking care right. of folks during the pandemic. God, he wasn't. There's, yeah, I mean, we, we have to, yeah, we have to take some of it back. We certainly, you know, I guess loyalty can be defined in a lot of different ways, right? Like, and as we've learned, like they, they haven't been loyal. They weren't loyal to Tulo or Nolan, uh, you know, but this is, yeah, this is beyond the pale. I agree. I missed who said it. Maybe Matt, our guy Matt in the comments. We don't often agree on things. We said this is worse than the Nolan trade. And I've often made that point on this show when we're talking about baseball things and somebody will say, oh, Dick Montfort's the absolute worst. And I'll go, actually, he tends to get these human things right. And then turns out they were getting this big human thing wrong, like really wrong. Uh, one thing I'll be curious to see is if they were the only team in baseball that did this. Um, that'll, be, that'll be interesting. But it, either way, that doesn't make it more acceptable somehow if other people were also doing this completely unacceptable thing. So it's, 
on, on a human level, this is just so much worse than swinging a bad trade or signing a bad contract or bringing in a player who doesn't pan out. You, you've got to treat your people right. And this is not treating your people right. Mm-mm. I mean, who, people who is Mumford think- being loyal to? If we really think about it, I mean, Todd Helton, his contract played <laughs> out, and Carlos Gonzalez. Yeah. Ultimately, they they've probably been the only two. In fact, there was something in there about the the handshake deal that Tulowitzki had with not just the previous GM Dan O'Dowd, um, but with Dick Monfort himself. And then Breidich goes and trades Tulowitzki. Is is Breidich really just the scapegoat for Monfort here on this? Like. Again, Monfort is, is Monfort only loyal, loyal to Monfort and whoever will tell him yes. That's it. Monfort cares about the bottom dollar. That's it. He doesn't care about the fans. He doesn't care about the people in his clubhouse. He doesn't care about the people working for his team if this is the type of organization he's going to run. And if that's the direction the Rockies are going, that's more reason for me to be upset at them than anything else that they do on the field. Because the Nolan trade was one thing, um, you know, when you're a fan of a team, it's it's hard to kind of separate it, but it was a baseball decision when you separate the personal aspect of Breidich being an idiot. But <laughs> if you know that's the type of organization that Monfort wants to run, then to me that says Monfort cares about Monfort, and that's that. I mean, there was a quote in the article that was like, one of the front office analytic, analytic people was holding dirty jerseys in their locker room and a coach came up to him and asked for like pitching analytics on one of the guys who played that day after he had just worked his like baseball analytic job and was holding dirty jerseys in the clubhouse. Like, <laughs> what is going on here? Can't imagine why a team that had the talent to win 34 or 35 games last year would have come out in such a terrible condition if that's how they were running things. I mean, that, that's the other thing is you can't even act like those – that it's completely separate from what happens out there on the field. That's uh, that, was, that was, to me, Patrick, the worst thing about the article was reading that part. The other stuff with the players, we kind of knew most of that, like you said, but this thing – this is bad and needs to be addressed. And we, we've all said, I think everybody uh, at this point on this, in this conversation has said Dick Monfort should sell the team. I don't, I don't think anybody is, has not uh, agreed with that position at this point. But until that, he also has to keep doing the other things. Like, you, you have to address this now. You have to have a press conference and explain, you know, is this just disgruntled employees, one of which had a very specific situation and, and is complaining and maybe it's overwrought? And if that's the case, you have to come out and say so or – and or apologize, probably do that either way. But you, this needs more of an explanation to me than, as we talked about, like bad well, trades and stuff. Well, what benefit? What benefit is there to Bonford in the front office doing that? I, I think it would only put their foot even further down their own gullet. And I, oh, I don't sure. think it would be, there's no benefit to doing that. There, there I don't think really there's anything you can say to justify that decision. Like, no. And people often are worried about, you know, how the players in the clubhouse are getting treated. But... Every part, everyone that's, that works for the Rockies is a part of that team. And, you know, you should expect to be treated with, like, basic human decency no matter where you go. But when you have a sports organization and you have a team, you know, everyone, the way everybody – the way everyone is treated matters. Like you can't only care about how the players in the locker room feel like your security guards, your, your, your ticket sales, people, your concession stands, people like anyone and everyone in that organization should feel like they are a part of that team because they are, because if they don't work, then like the whole thing doesn't run. It's like a cog in a machine. Right. And if they're not getting treated with basic human decency, then we've got a whole nother issue that we need to be addressed because there's nothing you can do to like or say to justify that. Um, one of the yeah, one, people. Go ahead, Patrick. Oh, uh, and I think we were probably going to maybe make the same point is the, the people from the analytics department, the four of the six um, that had left. And, and again, we know why now they, they had a little <laughs> bit more on their plate than they should have. But I remember when this this news first broke that they had uh, gone into different fields, like they were no longer working in sports. And to me, that that didn't mean anything. Um, they have bills that they needed to pay. They, they've got to go just get a job for the time being before maybe dipping that toe um, in, in, back into working in sports and, and working for a team, um, doing analytics. Does, do you think this mass exodus of the, the analytics department now, again, regardless of the fact that they're no longer in the field, uh, we know the communications department has 
taken a hit where we have some people that yeah. have moved on. And we again, we know behind the scenes there are some personal reasons. But is this you know an indicator really that I don't want to say nobody wants to work for the Rockies, but they're going to have a very hard time finding folks willing to do things the way that the Rockies do their business. Is this going to be a constant through line over the next couple of years? What do you think, Drew? Yeah, you know, this is uh, th- this goes back to what I said the night of the Nolan Arenado trade. And somebody also mentioned this in our Discord chat. Make sure you're a member, subscribe to the DNVR.com so you can be in these conversations so that when news like this breaks, you can react with us uh, in, in live time. And, and somebody brought up, are they just absolutely bleeding money? Like Dick Monfort is acting like a guy do you guys see Uncut Gems? Not my most favorite movie ever, but I mean, I a lot of people really loved it. But he, he's kind of behaving like that guy who doesn't have enough money for the promises that he's made. And he's just shuffling everything around and pissing everybody off in the process, right? And what did I say the night of the Nolan Arenado trade? If you don't have enough money to pay this guy what he's worth, then maybe you can't afford to own a baseball team. We'll take that and multiply it by 10. If you can't afford, as an owner of a professional baseball team, to hire someone to clean your clubhouse who's not also supposed to be running data on the opposing pitcher that day, then you can't afford to own a baseball team. You have no business owning a professional sports team in this or any other market if your response to these problems isn't to get creative and solve them or to raise money in another way or to say, hey, I'm a rich guy, I can handle it for a couple of years. But if you just go, sorry, I can't afford it, then you can't afford any of it. You can't afford to have the stadium and keep raking in the ticket sales and the overpriced beer sales and all the nonsense that you're still going to get from everybody because we love Coors Field and we're not going to stop going and it's one of only 30 baseball teams but it's embarrassing beyond any of the players stuff he can't afford to own a baseball team whether that's literally in terms of he doesn't have enough money to own a baseball team or at this point he just doesn't have enough like human capital, human ability to deal with people to own a baseball team. This is is unacceptable. Absolutely inexcusable. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> pretty much sums it up. Like, there's well, no Michaela, way. Well, Michaela, also, you have other teams in, in baseball that added payroll this offseason. So it's not like everybody across the entire industry decided to cut payroll. The, the Rockies did. They, they couldn't afford one of the best players in, in franchise history $35 million when they were able to spend $300 million over the course of the last four or five years on free agents, all of which combined to be worth the same value as a quadruple A player, right? <laughs> so they couldn't afford 30, and we're not even talking about uh, a $200 million payroll. We're talking about $35 million from for your franchise star, your cornerstone. They couldn't afford that. A lot of other teams have added payroll. To me, it seems like the Rockies are on the Rockies Island and whether it through Breidich inability to make relationships with other GMs, to make relationships with his players, through people not respecting Monfort or whatever it is, it seems like the Rockies problems are uniquely Rockies problems. Like this isn't a common theme in baseball. This is a common theme within the Colorado Rockies. Right. And if you strip down the issues, it all comes back to the fact that the owner of the team is not a good owner. He's <laughs> not a good owner of a like, team. No. Yeah. I, I think that's 100% right. Hey, it's got us all a little bit worked up here, so I'm going to take some CBD relaxing gummies, and you can get a great, great deal on those right now if you become a member. Now's the time, especially for you baseball fans, if you've let your membership uh, go, maybe you've been thinking about it but never done it, sign up. The season's right around the corner, and we got all kinds of fantastic stuff for you members. First, you get hooked up with a free shirt from the DNVR Locker, 
Uh, secondly, for our next 300 members, if you become an annual DNVR member, uh, you will get hooked up with a Recover Holistic Stick from Holistic Wellness. Holistic Wellness, all about that CBD. They send you packs of 10 milligram. This one's focused on recovery, but they do also have stuff for, as I said, uh, stress. Might be feeling a little bit of stress these days. Need some sleep, a little extra beauty, a little digest, the recovery, all these things you can help check out. Uh, the reviews at holisticwellness.com. That's H-O-L-I-S-T-I-K wellness.com. And better yet, they're offering our listeners 30% off their first purchase using code DNVR30. Get an annual membership, the free DNVR shirt, and a holistic stick with coupon inside. It is a banger of a deal. So check it out. Again, that's holisticwellness.com. See what works best for you there. And then head over to the dnvr.com to become a member of the family. I say it at the end of every show, but it really is true. You get all that stuff, discounts on hats, shirts, masks, a bigger beer when you come down here to the DMVR bar, hanging out with us in the Discord so that when stuff like this happens, uh, you, you've got a community of people to chat through the whole situation. Take some CBD in. <laughs> oh, I need, I need CBD, I need alcohol, I need something. This is oh, just... you, need a, you need a Breck Broody. You got your Breck Broody. I, I do, yeah. say. I, I, I'm still sans Seltzy. That's harder to say than you think. Sans, sans Seltzy. Send the Celsius. I got my Avalanche Amber. You got the Juice Drop IPA. Fantastic stuff. It's damn good Drew, beer no correct matter me what. if I'm wrong, but Sam Seltzy made his uh, spring training debut, Antonio. <laughs> that's it. Sam Seltzy. Yeah, that's uh, uh, the Grand Junction ballpark out there, right? Sam Seltzy Field. Yep. That's it. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> uh, it's early. fantastic stuff. I'm always having uh, the Breck Brews. I like the Avalanche Amber when it's hockey day. I like the uh, IPAs when, well, really, really any other time of the day. You can get them at your local King Supers down here at the DNVR bar or whatever liquor store. Either way, just have yourself some damn good beer. On a hockey day, at baseball hour, any of those. Any you you got to know where you're at. All right, what else was in that article, Patrick? All right, this was, ooh, this was a question that I wrote that, Mm, okay so quote as one industry insider put it they say let's try to be competitive referring to dick monford in the front office without actually trying to compete so drew and michaela does dick monford think rockies fans are stupid clearly if he thinks he can get away with everything that he's gotten away with yeah yeah i mean that or that they're just paying no attention whatsoever, which well, he I, just then genuinely doesn't care. Yeah, like yeah. he's like, well, I know what I'm doing, and Rockies fans, sorry, sorry, not sorry. Or, or yeah, or that he doesn't, or, or that he really does fully cynically buy into the cycle that we've all talked about before, right? Of yeah, they'll be mad at me for a little while, but in a couple of years, the team will get good again. We'll go back to the postseason. We'll sell enough tickets. People won't care enough, uh, and and they'll get over it. Um, I genuinely don't think he cares. I 100% in my heart believe that he does not care what the fans think. To him, it's getting people in the stands for however he can for the lowest acquisition cost, and he's just going to roll with it. And as long as he's making money and as long as his pockets are lined, nah. The Rockies, ultimately, what you're saying, Michaela, is the Rockies don't need fans. They don't need Rockies fans. They don't, they, because people are going to show up, and when they come to Colorado, which they've been known to do for the past 30 or so years, and, and, and a lot more so in the last <laughs> decade, on their list of things to do, it might be Garden of the Gods, Pikes Peak. When they go to Denver, what are they going to do? They're going to go to Coors Field. So if you don't have Rockies fans, you're still going to pump in 25000 on a on a bad night. And yeah. then in, I just yeah. don't know how you can look at... I mean, the proof is in the pudding, right? Like, look at the evidence that is before us. With everything that's happened this off season, a little bit of the season before that, like- Yeah, I okay. So this is where I get to piss off people on the other side of the spectrum. I meant to mention at the beginning of the show, I'm gonna make everybody mad today. So that first segment was just for the red meat crowd who's just gonna be mad at the Rockies. This is one of those things I really do struggle with because I've talked to a lot of people who know Dick Monfort really well, just as a person, uh, I've, uh, you know, I, I trust that they're not just blowing smoke up my ass. They're not just telling me stories. And e even in observing and talking to him a couple of times, I don't get the sense that he's this person that just 
doesn't care about anything. Like, I, he really seems to enjoy going to work every day, going to the ballpark every day, being around people. Uh, he has mostly positive interactions uh, with folks. I, I do think a lot of this, you know, negative, you know, this story right now, Jeff Breidich's personality really rubbing people the wrong way. Dick Monfort, while he's often made the wrong baseball decision, you know, up until this article, like we were talking about, he's almost always made the right people decision. And so it's tough for me to sit here and say he doesn't care at all. Uh, I do feel comfortable saying he doesn't care enough. And, and maybe that's the more, he doesn't care enough about Rockies fans. D does he care at all? It's, it's, it's difficult for me to say what's in anybody else's heart for, for that matter. And just hearing some of the stories I've heard about him over the years, it doesn't track, right? Why would he do certain things? Why would he, uh, you know, but, but as Michaela just said, the, there's also the public proof in the pudding of like, okay, but you have to care enough that it manifests in a, well, I guess we're using relationship analogies today. Uh, you know, it's kind of like when somebody tells you they're sorry for doing something, but then continues to do that right. thing. Yeah. It's right. At some point, your actions have to match up with your words. You have to prove to people you care about the Rockies and the Rockies fan base and, and making this a legit organization. And that right now, especially, there's just none of. He's just the ex saying, please, baby, I promise you I'm a changed man. Mm -hmm. And it's like based yeah. on what? Yeah, I have a news flash for all of us Rockies fans. We are in an abusive relationship with the Colorado Rockies, all right? They just keep hitting us and hitting us, and we're like, you know, I'm gonna think I'm gonna try it one more time, and then boom, slap in the face. And that's what today felt like. It felt like a slap in the face again, and that, you know, we had all collectively maybe gotten a little bit happier about the Rockies, and then boom, nope, your organization sucks. Have fun dealing with that. Like, <laughs> I very much feel like I'm in a toxic relationship with the Colorado Rockies. Like, Oof. And, and this is going to continue to happen regardless of articles that are put out, because we know in, I think it's early May, Colorado goes out to St. Louis. And so yep. you're going to see Nolan Arenado in those baby blues with the with the two cardinals, two birds on a bat, oh. and in the fourth, July Fourth weekend, <laughs> Nolan Arenado is going to come back, and that's going to be another reminder. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're going to have those moments where I, I don't think, let's say, I don't think the Cardinals and Yankees play each other this year. But if they did, you go, oh, a photograph of DJ LeMahieu in the pinstripes, Michaela, you're already gagging a little yeah. bit. Right? <laughs> a picture sorry. of DJ LeMahieu next to Nolan Arenado in the Cardinals <laughs> uni, and you go, oh, it's that reminder again. Like it's not going to end. And we want it to. We want to just yeah. be blissfully ignorant. And it works for so long. But at the end of the day, you have to come to grips with the team that plays baseball in your town is run incredibly poorly. And because of that, they're, they just have little to no chance of ever winning a World Series because yeah. everything would have to be right. Everything would have to be right. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I have I have friends that work for the Rockies and, you know, I think a big moment for me was when I was talking to my friend who works in the ticket sales department and literally the day that the state of Colorado announced that there would be fans allowed in Coors Field, as soon as season tickets went on sale, like even before then, their phone was nonstop ringing of people trying to figure out how to get tickets. Yeah. Like they were wall to wall packed from open to close of people trying to get tickets. And I guarantee you that made Monfort smile ear to ear because even after he was a part of trading, was a part of the worst trade in the history of baseball, people were still jamming up the phone lines trying to figure out how they could get tickets to Rockies games. Yeah. So I feel like it's just rewarding bad behavior. And I'm not going to sit here and tell people, you know, don't go to games, boycott the Rockies. Like everyone has to make that personal decision for themselves. But if, you know, you can trade the best third baseman in baseball and then a couple weeks later have people nonstop calling you trying to get tickets to your organization, like what reason do you have to change? Because you're still going to make money. Yeah, I mean, I apparently are they making money? That's, that's the other thing is like because well, they're acting like they're losing. They're, but, sell, but, they're selling tickets. Totally, <laughs> they're they're keeping themselves afloat, right? No, that that's one hundred percent right. But it, it just goes back to the, the the pressure has to be put on them to sell. The the, the 
ownership group. I, I say them, the Monforts. We always talk about Dick. We, we stopped talking about Charlie Monfort, and that's probably for the best. He's not around and is involved in stuff anymore. But it is, it, it's absolutely infuriating. And, and you're right that that's, that element's there. I do think, and I don't know yet how it's going to manifest, this is going to be different. This, this isn't going to play out the same way the Larry Walker, the Matt Holiday, or the Troy Tulowitzki thing did, where people did ultimately just, if not forgive, kind of forget and, and move on. I, th- I think they're dramatic. Like, opening day is one thing. And the first couple of weeks or the first month or two after a pandemic and all that is another. But once people have a choice of going to a concert or a Rockies game or, you know, literally anything else. Like, I think this vitriol is going to last for a while. And while they may not be in for a rude awakening right away, they may be laughing their way to the bank with those opening day dollars. Like, this is going to set in. This is not some, you know, everyone's mad right now because of the trade thing. And if that's how they're trying to play it, uh, they're they're going, they're in for a rude awakening at some point. Yeah, I think... You know, outside of the the three starters that uh, they could potentially have for a while, if they extend Sensatella and Freeland, they got Marquez for for four more years. Outside of those three guys, you don't have enough for a team, right? If these, if some of these players aren't on the club right now, those inexperienced players, those lost boys, if you will, uh, mm-hmm. if they don't really come to fruition, this club could really start to lose a lot of games and kind of what you're you're saying here drew could come to fruition where people just stop coming to the ballpark because it really is bad there are, there is no star player to hang your cat your hat on if mcmahon and rogers don't you know play to the the, the best of their abilities and, and really reach their pinnacle right then one pitcher who's, injury who's and now star? you're a 100 105 lost team and people aren't come people aren't going to keep coming to the ballpark for that well even if they're even if they're a 90 loss team sure. people are just going to lose interest at a certain point and again they'll they'll do well i think they'll make money but their payroll is going to have to be really low and it and it could be a while so i i think again this is really good timing for dick monford to kind of blow this up because he's going to get away with it because people just want to go outdoors and we understand that and people just want to go see a ball game and, and, and see something that's other than the pandemic and they're going to have that opportunity this year they're going to have a, next year as well it, we'll see what kind of capacity there's allowed next year and in a couple years time though if if rogers and mcmahon don't light it up and some of their prospects that are still a little bit further away don't start lighting it up why would anybody really be all that interested right. in going to rockies games at least numerous rockies games because i think everyone yeah, catch one. Rockies fans, everybody go to one exactly. rockies game. <laughs> hey, i gotta go to father's day because hey maybe yeah. something exciting will happen like what nolan did and sure and, 2017 whatever it may be but it'll be one rather than getting a season ticket plan or all 81 home games and so this really is kind of that first stage that we'll go fine right opening day is going to be a sellout and with with limited capacity they're going to do really well on ticket sales this year uh, with limited capacity but going forward is really where you know they're gonna they're gonna feel that heat and fans are gonna remember fans aren't gonna forget yeah, I, I, I think so. It's uh, we're, all right. Well, since we're talking about how the season is going to go, now might be the time to bet on it. Maybe not. Maybe don't bet while you're angry and after a couple of Breck brews. Maybe <laughs> bet on other baseball teams or March Madness going on right now. Rugby, KBO, maybe not Major League Baseball. But if you do want to bet on Major League Baseball or anything else for that matter, you got to go to the absolute best sports book app available, and that's the DraftKings Sportsbook app. They're still hooking you up with all kinds of special promo deals all the time. And right now, you can turn $1 into $100. Uh, what is, this is for college basketball. So, yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's like, and I'm on the wrong page. For college basketball, uh, just got to pick a team now at this point. I guess we're past the, the underdogs over cat stage if you've made it to this point. Everybody's just a bird. Nah, mm, tried to work a, a third animal into the mix. Didn't work. Uh, <laughs> but you can turn $1 into 100 bucks if you pick a team in the tournament to win. Download the tra- top-rated draft 
DraftKings Sportsbook app. Now use promo code DNVR when you sign up to turn $1 into 100 bucks if the college basketball team of your choosing pulls off the win. That's code DNVR to turn a dollar into $100 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Colorado only, new customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Syracuse, man, number eleven seed. I had him going Sweet Sixteen. You did, and that's the and that's the only major upset team to go to the Sweet Sixteen. I really care to talk about because that's, the other ones. I heard about it. Really nailed those. That's right. Totally nailed it. Uh, another thing I totally nailed, by the way, was using Gabby G A B I dot com slash D N V R. All the letters in there. I'll do it for you one more time. G A B I dot com slash D N V R. I went there. Filled in information for about six minutes and found out I'm going to save 480 bucks over the next year. Simple as that. I've got no calls, no texts, no bothersome emails. Nothing. I've had no contact from Gabby since the day I did this. Just went there, found out, switched over the car insurance and found out going to save about 480 bucks over the year. You're probably overpaying for your car home insurance. You can see how much Gabby can save you. It's totally free to check out. No obligation whatsoever. Just Find out, aren't you a little curious if you could save enough to buy a new big screen next year instead of throwing it down the drain on some insurance that you're still going to have? So head over again. It's gabi.com slash dnvr. See how much you can save. Really appreciate it, of course, when you use that slash dnvr because it means that we get the credit for it and we really appreciate that. <laughs> we like it. Not, not to show off all my uh, saber metrics, uh, saber metric abilities, but Drew, you save 480 bucks over six minutes. That is $80 per minute. Oh, wow. Spent on Abby.com slash DNVR. That's pretty good. It's a solid dollar per war situation. There. Your DPM, your dollar per minute. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Your DPM was very high on that one. I'm buying on that. One. Uh, I'm going All to right, what else was in that? that. <laughs> what, what else from the piece do we need to commiserate about before I give people a few potential pieces of light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, there was one line in there that I never want to hear again. Let me know how you <laughs> feel about it. Um, okay. It was the phrase, and we've I feel like we've heard it almost just about every press conference. I'm calling it that. I'm calling it that. Not media availability. I'm calling it a press conference. That's where I'm at right now. With you know what? I'm a big man. A little too inside baseball for some. But um, I'm tired of the phrase, quote, we just need to learn how to be a better team. Didn't yeah. sign anybody during this offseason. We just need to learn how to be a better team. Hey, you're going in the trade deadline. You know, you didn't acquire anybody or you just brought in a reliever and there's a 38-year-old Matt Holiday. Let's see if we can kind of you know, clear the paddles and, and revi revive him and see if he can come back to cores and have some magic, magic. But really, we just need to learn how to play better. Do you ever want to hear that again? No. Ugh. Never again. Yeah. Uh, again, this is one of those things where I'm going to piss some people off. I understand where it comes from. They, they have to stop saying it. I totally understand where it comes from in this era of guys they acquired who did not live up to their resumes. And it's like, it, it's, I, I understand that there are coaches and there are GMs and there's a whole apparatus, but ultimately at the end of the day, especially veterans like Brian Sean, Jake McGee and Ian Desmond, it's like, you are what you are, dude. If, if you can't live up to that contract, it's not because the Rockies stopped you from being good. Like those guys sucked and it's their fault. At the end of the day, like we, we love to spread blame around each and every way. But who do we talk to about the fact that in year two, Wade Davis was the worst relief baseball, right? Who in the front office is, is it their fault? Who on the analytics team? Why, what, what was Bud Black supposed to do other than maybe stop putting him in baseball games? That I could, <laughs> maybe, maybe that would have been a solid thing. So there's, there's and, and we've made those arguments along the way, but I understand in their minds what they think they're saying when they go, hey, we got, we got to do better than that. Now, now is a stupid time to be saying something like that. Like, what did, what did you get to put all that pressure on Brendan Rogers? Like, no, but when the veterans were underperforming, it, it made sense to me, sorry. <laughs> Duck. Listen. <laughs> she goes, look. Listen. 
<laughs> if you I'm, need to nudge your chair away from yeah. you a little bit back, it's okay. I'm in a much more jaded position than Mr. Creason is at the moment. And in my opinion, all roads lead back to Breitich. And I think this article did a fantastic job highlighting the true and utter failure that has been Jeff Breitich's tenure as general manager of the Colorado Rockies. I know that, you know, when he brought in some of these players, they were performing a lot better than how they finished their career. But it just does not excuse the fact that this is one of my favorite parts of the article. They Jeff Breidich brought in 19 free agents so far in his tenure as GM. He spent $300 million in salary to these 19 free agents, and their combined war is negative 3.4. It does not get better, does not get worse than that, <laughs> yeah. actually. It's horrible. Like there has, I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think I know a worse GM in baseball right now than Jeff Breidich and his total lack of vision and execution and his ability to identify the pieces that are needed to put together a successful baseball team. I think there are issues yeah. with with Breidich being able to develop the team that he wants to, but he also needs to convince his boss. He, he needs to convince the owner of the club. And you know, the article does talk about it. And, and I sound like I'm defending Jeff Breidich. What I'm trying to say is, you know, he's he's I think been blocked in a lot of ways from from doing certain things. Like the Wade Davis thing, it looked like he checked off all the boxes. And according to research and development, Wade Davis was going to be a relatively safe bet, but Shaw and uh, McGee, not so much. And yet those guys still had to go out there. We know Monfort has blocked certain trades in the past and has kind of poked his head in is, is essentially served as the team president. Yeah. And you know, for that, I'll say this, if this is the final year of Jeff Reidich, because the article also suggested God, please let that this, this might be <laughs> right. <laughs> His contract is suggest up. that this is Breidich's final year and that he's looking forward to leaving. And if that's true, because I, yeah. I don't necessarily think that <laughs> before one. this article, I didn't think Breidich had a shot at being a GM again in baseball. And I think it's going to be really hard for him to do that again. But if he walks away from this and, you know, kind of lets other people know, like, look, my hands were tied and I, I, I started from a low level employee, relatively speaking, worked my way up to GM and then you know, I was handcuffed a lot by my owner. I think other teams would say, that's all right. You, you still have a lot of knowledge. You know what it's like to be GM. He can be hired as somebody as uh, an assistant GM somewhere, work on player development. He was very successful in that. One of the reasons why the Rockies were able to build a very good farm system in the mid 2010s. Um, but yeah, him walking away is, I think, again, suggests that Dick Monfort is more of a problem than Jeff Breidich. They're both problems. Absolutely. And I think, the only reason that Breidich still has a job is because he just goes along with whatever Monfort wants to do. And that's, again, in itself an issue. Like, I can solve the Rockies' issue in probably two moves. Right. <laughs> Fire Breidich and sell the team. Here you go. It's not brain surgery there. Uh -huh. But, like, <laughs> uh -huh. Breidich has a job because he says whatever, whatever Monfort wants goes. And Monfort should not be acting as the president of baseball operations for the Rockies. Like, that also is an issue. Like, right. he should be an omnipotent figure that is just the <laughs> owner of the team and is happy in his mansion far, far away from yeah. Coors Field. Like, he should not be involved in any baseball decision ever, period. And right. the fact that he is is a huge issue and a huge part of the problem with this organization. So as mad as I am at Breidich, I'm equally as mad as Monfort for because they are one in the same in my opinion like the father the son and the holy spirit like, it's <laughs> Breidich and Monfort it's like so it's the they're the issue like totally and it just it's infuriating to me that you know we like the Rockies are very much viewed as a joke in Major League Baseball there were two quotes in this article that said something degrading towards the Rockies in the opinion of other Major League Baseball people. yeah that I'm used to like <laughs> He, one person was like, well, I hope Reidich stays the general manager. Yeah, like, was very funny. sarcastically. That was, that was pretty like, funny, I admit. And there was another one that was just talking about, you know, Monfort's inability to take a step back and let people do their jobs. Right. Which, I mean, I guess if you don't have a president of baseball operations and your GM is incompetent, like, I, maybe you have to step in at that point, even though you shouldn't be in that position. Right. 
but it's just it's <laughs> oh yeah i don't and i don't the worst part is is i don't think it's going to get any better until he sells the team and bradich is gone so i uh, right yeah i i think that's right i i think there are ways it can get better but it's not going to get fundamentally better it's not going to get you know holistically better until dick monfort sells the team and that's why pressure needs to be continually ratcheted up on him i I do think there were some uniquely bad things about Jeff Breidich, particularly with regards to these personal poisonous relationships, right? One of the things that they get into in the article is that meeting in 2019 uh, where, where they got together and said, hey, you know, we'd like, we're not going to be able to do X. We're not going to add to the team in this way, but, you know, we, we'd like to tr try to get you to maybe stop saying negative things about the team in public and be a little bit more of a leader. And Nolan said, well, I don't want to be a leader. And if you're not going to make the team better then trade me. And it's like, that's not a good tact from Nolan Arenado to take, but a good leader of an organization goes, okay, he got emotional and said something he didn't mean. Let's let him wash that off. We'll come back and we're going to, we're going to rebuild that relationship who amongst us hasn't said something to somebody they care deeply about that they, they wish later they could take back or, or not have said or not have done or whatever. So I, I actually didn't think that was a good look for Nolan at all in the article. And I think more of that stuff will come out that he really didn't play ball. I've heard from a source. He refused to meet with them for the entire winter this past winter before getting traded. Like he refused to meet with his own team. That's not a good look. That said, it's your job as the guy who poisoned that relationship to try to Make figure it, it out. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to have no leadership abilities there and, and to say, well, okay, well now we've got to do this professional thing, trading the ball player because the personal relationship is so bad. That's where I think getting rid of Jeff Bright. They also talked about Michaela, you, you and I were talking about this before we came on today, the other players yeah. just getting so done with yeah. Jeff Breidich. And that's where I think you can, if he steps away at the end of the year, which it sounds like he's probably going to, I don't know why wait till the end of the year at this point, I, I, they're going to let him oversee a Trevor story trade is <laughs> come on. But well, that, I do think you can get the narrative of, right. of making somebody else the Patsy and yeah. That but I do think you can get some Monfort. goodwill if you bring in a, a, a GM under Dick Monfort still who just doesn't piss off everybody. I don't know how else to put it. just doesn't alienate every single person around him. Of course, we've talked about the team president thing. I do think you can get a better structural Colorado Rockies organization with those two things, even if Monfort still owns the team. Of course, we all recognize it'd just be best if he sold it, though. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Ugh, it's just <laughs> it's fair what you said about about Arenado I think to a degree I mean he, he I'm not really bothered by what he said about being a, a leader because I, I think what they want they've been wanting him to do is lead the young guys yeah not be a babysitter but but right. kind of lead the guys rather rather than just leading by example and and you know to, to Nolan's credit like this is the guy that they had the last seven years they knew what kind of player he was they knew what he was like in the clubhouse so it wasn't like this surprised when he just says okay all of a sudden now i'm not going to do that thing that i've been doing he's that's kind of not him so uh, yeah. to your point how you just said like you need to know your your personnel a little bit um you need to understand that look if you're going to delegate responsibilities don't delegate you know player development in the clubhouse right. to Nolan Arenado and that's what and I that's said too. Nice yeah. I was right. like I don't think Nolan was saying I don't want to be a leader I just think he was saying it's right. not my job to develop young talent it is your job as a general manager and the owner of this team right. to develop young talent through the minor league system and the coaches you have down there before they get to the point where they're coming to me asking me fundamentals like I, th I, I think I understand that. If that's what how it was intended. No, I, I totally if get that. I like, just think if he was a, you know, 25-year-old point guard on an NBA team and he came out and said, hey, it's not my job to make my teammates better, I think media would react to that a little bit differently than Nolan Arenado saying, hey, it's not my job to make my teammates better. Right. Which is what he, the direct quote. I'm just saying. Well, yeah. And he, <laughs> as getting paid what he was getting paid. That's and the other being, thing. You're bringing in $35 million right. a year. And being you the can talent that you coach are the, the team, young guys a little bit. Like, man. yeah, it is a part of your job description when you are a part of a team and you're getting paid that much money to be a leader in some form. But also too, like we have to take into consideration like how far at that point the relationship between him and the organization had soured because, right. you know, 
I think he said, uh, Monfort said in the press conference, like he, what was the word? He was ailing over not understanding why no one was upset for months. Laid awake, many sleepless yeah, nights. Sleepless nights about wondering what out. was wrong with Nolan. Like, just pick couldn't. up the phone and call him. It's, you're the owner up. of the team and a player in your organization is upset. Not to mention he's the best player in your organization. Like, call him. So the fact that, you know, Breidich is... Brightich and has a horrible personality and none of the players respect him or talk to him. There was a part in the article that said the players don't even make an attempt to have a conversation with him anymore because right. he just passes them in silence and doesn't say anything. So, you know, we don't know. I mean, we kind of know a little bit about how bad the relationship had been at that point. But like when you feel like you're up against a wall and nothing's going to change and nothing you do is going to make the situation better. Like I kind of understand that like hopeless, like I'm not going to help you out here because I just don't, I can't with this organization anymore. And it should have never gotten to that point. But I think another thing that this article showed us was that we shouldn't have been surprised that Monfort chose Breitich over Nolan. And I know there was a lot of contributing right. factors to that, but like, look what happened with Walt Weiss in that debacle between before, you know, Bud Black came in, like, we should have seen this coming a mile away. Yeah. Like Monfort doesn't want to get rid of his yes man. And it's been proven before with all of these other various situations within the organization. Right. And it's just been toxic. Like nobody respects Breitich in that locker room. Right. It, yeah, no, it, you, you, you did a lot there, Michaela. That was, um, I, I definitely couldn't said it, could have said it better. Um, and Drew, so, so Drew, here's my question to you. Yeah. Because I think I know what your thought has been on this, and I, this all season a lot has changed. And so for anyone maybe coming at you and, and saying like, uh, defense this and defense that, you've you've been on the offense plenty it's this safe. off season. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious of what your take, and maybe this leads into the silver lining. I don't know. Under Dick Monfort as the owner of this team and the way he operates this organization and has essentially been operating it, will the Rockies win a World Series? on his watch. I mean, they, they, I, I'm still of the same opinion that that's absolutely something that can happen. I don't, that's not, uh, sadly, it is the state of baseball that the quality of your baseball operations and, and all of those things at this moment in time don't, you can get your way into winning uh, a baseball team into a winning baseball team without even having necessarily done it on purpose, right? Like we've talked about this before. They almost already won a World Series in spite of Dick Monfort. So the idea that they could it doesn't even sound like a close to an impossibility to me. There's just so many different things that can happen in a baseball season. You can win in spite of your owner. And I, I do think that the Colorado Rockies can win. Now, will they? I don't know how long he's going to own the team, you know, so it's like, over the next 10 years, do I think the Colorado Rockies can win the World Series? Yeah. Uh, obviously, they're not going to be likely to do so. Certainly not any time in the next four or five in the foreseeable. But for 10 years is an awful long-ass time, folks. Like that's, that, that's one of those things that I, I think we get a little carried away with projecting into the future. And if you would have asked me in 2005, did I ever think the Rockies would play in the World Series in my lifetime? I might have said no. And then two years later, they're right there. So it just, you know, I, it, that, that kind of thing, I feel like it's secondary to whether or not they should even be allowed considering the off the field stuff now to, to run with it because it's just like if you're not going to do the on-field stuff right and you're going to do all the off-field stuff now uh, during this pandemic it's like who even cares like they just have to sell the team like it's it's as simple as that like the even if they did the 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 real gross part of it is even if they did win the world series we would know it was in spite of ownership and people would still feel crappy about it Michaela in a word preferably one that has only two letters <laughs> do the Colorado Rockies any any two letter word do the Colorado Rockies win a World Series under Dick Monfort's watch no okay thank you 
Well, I'll tell you who is going to win the World Series of Beef. And that's our friends over at Hassle Cattle Company getting you some Wagyu beef, the absolute best beef in the world. Don't believe me? Try it. Just try it. Haven't had any negative reviews back yet. 100% positive reviews from Wagyu beef at Hassle Cattle Company, whether you're getting steaks, ground beef, ground chuck, in some hamburgers that are award-winning. Go to H-A-S-S-D-E-L-L. -L. I'll do it again because when you're spelling stuff and you stutter in the middle, it doesn't help people very much. Mm -mm. So H-A-S-S-E-L-L, cattlecompany.com. Use promo code DNVR10 to get 10% off. And if you end up ordering over 200 bucks, which I highly, highly recommend if you've got the freezer space, they'll hook you up with free shipping. Again, it's HassleCattleCompany.com, promo code DNVR10. And let me know. Show it off. Show me what you're cooking out there. We want to see it. It's a delicious beef. And finally, last sponsor for today, MSU Denver Online. You know they are the leaders in digital education, the absolute best. Check them out at msu.edu slash online today. They've got courses in all kinds of things. Whether you're starting out a new degree, finishing up an old one, just want some extra skills, just want to learn about something you've always been curious about. Maybe you're looking for a connection in the local community, somebody who could place you with a job somewhere down the line. Either way, they're the absolute best. So again, check them out today at msu.edu slash online. There might not be any more dynasties in, in baseball, but there, there can be a dynasty in beef, and that's Hassel County. <laughs> the, the dynasty of beef. The beef dynasty. That's it. That would be a that'd be a good right. is that an NXT name? You know if that's been taken? <laughs> is, hey, it what, taken? is there an NXT wrestler named Beef Dynasty? Do you know? Off the top of your head. An, off NXT. Top of your head. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> I don't think no, Michaela's a big right NXT. Answer. She's uh, Michaela's more of an AEW gal, I think. No, no, she, she, she doesn't even know what exactly in the world. What are people talking about? <laughs> WWF? Or do any of these letters mean anything to you? Okay, Drew. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. All right, Michaela. We're gonna give you sixty seconds, right now, off the top of your head, to name as many pro wrestlers as you know ever, all time, that's ever even wrestled for a minute. Go. John Cena. <laughs> is that one? John that's Cena is going. one. You're on one. Uh. Um. Who are the two girls that the Bella twins? There you go. We'll give you, they okay. have a reality TV one. show. John's, that counts as two. She's, she's a yes. three now. Yeah. Uh, and one of the people that one of them was briefly married to or whatever. Can you, there's another husband You've figure You've only named one there. family so yeah. far. Yeah. <laughs> so but far. You've three people. Okay. Yeah. That's about it. No Hulk Hogan or The Rock. Or... Oh, oh, yeah, sure. I didn't know that they. <laughs> she goes, no, I know those people. They were yep. What is this? I mean, uh, that was only about 20 seconds. We're, we're going to have to give you 40 seconds later on down the line. Uh, that was enjoyable. Down. I did enjoy that. All right. Final thoughts on this. Was there anything else from the piece that we just wanted to make sure we didn't miss? Rockies overvalue their own prospects. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the prospect. <laughs> and a team in 2021 win a championship without a analytics department. No. Without an analytics department. So with they're the going analytic. into this year without an analytics department. They have an analytic. Yeah, yeah. That's another problem. So not only do they not have the best third baseman in baseball anymore, they also don't have an analytic department to help make decisions. And right. they are also just. I don't. I, are they down to one person in the communications department as well? The communicator? As far as we know. We've got the communication. We've got the analytic. Yeah, how many people do you need to necessitate a department? It's got to be at least four, I'm thinking. If you have three, you have a cadre. So if you have an analytics cadre. Cadre. I don't, yeah, I don't know cadre. how many. Yeah. I don't use that word very often, but you knew I knew it. Um, I know, and I know, like, you guys don't put a lot of thought, not a lot of thought, but you guys don't invest in much in, like, farm system rankings that I do we very differently on that so that's that's a me thing Patrick is into it speaking of that, which <clears throat> yes we, uh, we this is a whole other can of worms we, we got a couple we minutes got, left you're gonna open this prospects coming I'm out just compounding the issue like right I'm just making it worse because we have the worst GM in baseball the worst owner in baseball and the 27th ranked prospect system 
in baseball. So not only do we not have anything to look forward to now, we have nothing to look forward to in the future. So, (laughs) you know, it's really great to be a Rockies fan and Uh, I'm just really uh, loving it. But (laughs) I mean, uh, I'm just frustrated and I know that not everyone is going to share the same sentiments that I do about what's going on with the team, but I think I'm jaded because, you know, I've come from a background where I've seen what a functioning front office looks like. You know, the Diamondbacks, whatever they are, they, they haven't made the playoffs. You know, their, their on-field success hasn't been great, but at least the people there like each other and they like the GM and they are happy to work for the Diamondbacks organization. And so I think that's why I'm jaded is just because I've seen what it looks like to be a part of a team that cares about the people in the front office, behind the scenes, on the field, all of that. So I just want to give people a little bit of a disclaimer. Like that's where I'm coming from when I get so upset because that's what I want for the Rockies. I want the Rockies to be able to function in that way. The GM to have a relationship with the players and the the people in the front office to have a relationship with the owner and the, the president of baseball operations and the GM. And it's just frustrating that they don't have that. And it doesn't seem like they care that they don't have that. It just, it's just so frustrating. Yeah. And I wish that there was more to look forward to, that there could be a light at the end of the tunnel. But until he sells the team, I just don't. Yeah, I don't see that if, if I'm trying to give you the light at the end of the tunnel, the one thing I will say is that before Jeff Breidich, and you know, I've no one has defended Jeff Breidich more long. I even did it in this conversation. Even I didn't even get into the dollar per war thing you talked about that leaves out Adam Adovino and is a talking point like they've never won their division, but they've also never lost 100 games and the technicalities and whatever. Yes, I've defended Jeff Breidich as much as anybody, but before he got here, what you just described about the Diamondbacks, that was the Rockies. Got into the playoffs a couple of times in 07, 09. Not enough success as they wanted, but everybody liked each other. Yeah. The organization got along, and especially when Kelly McGregor, and that's now you got to go back to 2010, when, and he died in 2010, but that was never the issue. They were, they were not a good organization. They were, they, no, no, no. They were not a good baseball team. They were a good organization. They were a good family team business from 1993 to at least 2010 probably even a little bit longer so i think my biggest anger and frustration today with this article is the peeling back of that other part of it somehow went away that other part of it somehow is gone now that they just like you said that they just don't care because there was a time they did and that it's sitting here like this now where you're just going okay i guess it's it's like we said at the beginning, it's dysfunctional. Yeah. And it used to be, uh, they didn't win enough games at the end of the day, but everyone shook hands and went home and said, hey, you're my guy. Still, I'm still proud to be a member of the Rockies organization. Right now, no one's proud to be a part of the Rockies community, a part of the Rockies organization. A part of the, I'm wearing a paper bag on my head when I go to Coors yeah. Field. <laughs> A DNVR branded paper bag? Hell yeah, DNVR we should make branded. those. Eric, are you still in the but, comments? Drew... Drew, what you said was was really true. And the one through line that I can think of, because you, you you said it, you know, in, in 2016, they were they were kind of that that team where they it seems like they were doing everything right to a certain degree, right? Yeah. So the one through line for all of it is just this idea about Dick Monfort wanting the legacy of the Rockies to just be him, to be the revitalization of Lodo. That's it. You know, a, a World Series would be great, sure. But if you do that, then you're going to have a superstar player. That's the MVP that becomes maybe not bigger than the team, but becomes bigger than the organization for a moment. Apparently, like, yeah. Outside of Todd Helton, he's been the only guy that you really can connect with the Rockies because everyone else has been traded off, sold off, not brought back in to be like a hitting instructor. There hasn't been a lot of celebration for the history of the team. There's still right. no Hall of Fame in McGregor Square. You know, pictures just came out in the past week, and they're working on it. That's fine. But I think Dick Monfort wants to be what people think of when they think about the Colorado Rockies, and they say, look at what he did for the city of Denver, Dick Monfort, and not look at how successful the Rockies are. In that case, I've got the perfect final happy solution for everybody. Dick? <sighs> Job well done. Lodo revitalized. You did it. Finish McGregor Square and sell the damn team. Job done. Mission accomplished. We will. No one will sing. I will write the damn book, and I'm not even joking. 
how Dick Monfort revitalized a community. And I will write everything about all the wonderful things he did for Lodo. Mission accomplished. If that's what you want your legacy to be, well done. It's beautiful out there. Sell the team to somebody who cares about running a quality organization. Go get into now. real estate Straight development. Up. Yep. You Go should build be something a else. real estate developer and investor. You should not own a baseball team. Please, for the love of God and all that is good and holy in the city of Denver, sell the team. Dick does Denver. Title of Drew Cruz's book. <laughs> Dick does there we Denver. Go. Sell the team. All right. I think that's how we, we got to wrap it up there. Thank you all for hanging out with us for this one. We really do appreciate it. We know it's been rough going for you Rockies fans out there. So we know uh, that all we can do is be here for and slash with you. We, we know the YouTube comments were popping off today. Make sure that you're joining us on the YouTube channel live. We're going live a lot more these days and especially once the season starts, so you're gonna be one of joining us on those. You gotta follow on social media. Oh no, see if I can do them without everybody's in front of me. Usually they're all written there. Uh -oh. Okay, so at Michaela E. Perkins, at Patrick D. Lyons, at Drew Creaseman, at DNVR underscore Rockies. We do have at Kel Sorbo, Tech Boy, running the board behind the scenes today, making this TV. first time in studio and from home thing work and that so this was went off pretty well i think so thanks everyone for doing all that make sure you're subscribed to the dnvr.com so you get discounts on hat shirts mask a bigger beer when you come down to the dnvr bar and of course we talked about right now the first 300 members getting those holistic stick from holistic wellness cbd products really no reason not to sign up to become a member of the dnvr family right now so for all of us here thank you so much for being absolutely awesome out there we will continue to be absolutely patrick Lyons, michaela perkins kel sorbo andrew creaseman in here and until next time we will see you at the ballpark <laughs>